Hello everyone. This is Ethan from Invensys Learning. Welcome to our YouTube channel. I am sure you guys might have heard of the term DevOps, right? In today's session, we are going to discuss what is DevOps. So, without further ado, let's get started with today's session. Today, let's see why DevOps is an absolute need in every industry. It is one of the latest buzzword among the IT industry and will remain that way until every IT company adopts DevOps or any of its methodologies for their software development. So let's see the agenda for today. We will look into evolution of software methodologies. By that, I mean we will look into two popular methods, namely waterfall model and agile methodology. We will learn its definition and limitations respectively. The limitations of these two methodologies gave birth to a new methodology called DevOps, as how it overcame all the limitations that waterfall and agile methodology had. Then we will be looking into, what is DevOps? How companies are benefited by implementing it? What are the different phases of DevOps lifecycle and what are the tools used in it etc. We will differentiate between continuous integration delivery and deployment as well, and understand what actually infrastructure as a code means in DevOps. Finally, we finish off the session by understanding how tech giants uses DevOps in their software applications. So firstly, we have waterfall model. Industries were using waterfall model before DevOps for their software development. This method was documented in the year 1970 by Royce. Waterfall model is a linear approach to software development. It mainly aims for a successful outcome as a result of meticulous planning at each phase in the process. As the name suggests it's pretty similar to a waterfall as it follows a top-down approach for building a software application. It has distinct goals for each phase of development. Imagine a waterfall on the cliff of a steep of a mountain. Once the water has flowed over the edge of the cliff, it cannot turn back. In waterfall model, the requirement has to be provided beforehand and in full. The idea of this model was that it's going to be stable for many years. Let's quickly look into the different stages of waterfall model. The model has various phases starting with the analysis phase. In this phase, you try to analyze the requirements given by the clients. In the design phase, the analysis will be transformed into an ordered structure, that is you prepare a blueprint of the software. After completing the design phase, it's time for developers to get their hands dirty by coding for the application. This would be the source code, and you test it in the testing process. Different checks on the application are performed, such as unit testing, integration testing, performance testing, etc. In the deployment phase, the tested application is deployed onto production servers. Finally comes the monitoring phase, wherein 60% of the entire effort is spent monitoring the application's performance. Let us now see the limitation of this model and how Agile model overcame this limitation. Changes to the product are complicated to draw while it is in the testing stage. Not suitable for complex projects. The end product is only available at the end of the cycle. To summarize, the waterfall model was only acceptable for projects with stable specifications. By stable, I mean that over time, requirements will not change. But this is an improbable thing in today's world, as specifications keep changing from time to time. Now, let's move on to the next method or the methodology that is Agile methodology. This method is kind of a practice which promotes the continuous iteration of development and testing during the software development cycle. In simple terms, Agile is an iterative, adaptive, and team-based approach. It emphasizes on rapid delivery of an application and complete functional components. In this methodology, each project is broken into so many iterations. Usually iteration will be in between 2 to 8 weeks and at the end of each iteration a working product should be delivered. Let me make it easy for you. If you look into the diagram which is on the screen, here we get the feedback from the testing that is done in the previous iteration, we design and develop the application again, again we test it and discover some new things which can implement it in the application to make it better. Let us now see the limitation of this model. High maintainability risk. Time consuming because customers, developers, and testers must constantly interact and should agree on each other's decision. Inconsistency in the computing environment, which led to conflicts between development team and operations team. For example, say suppose the code developed by the developer works fine at his end, but there is some issue when it comes to production side and this was because of the inconsistency in the computing environment, difference in the configuration. So, it is important to maintain same configuration as the developer's laptop. There was a lack of coordination and agile methodology between developers and operation engineers, which slowed down the development phase and updates. Tech companies have started to understand the need for better team coordination and quicker software delivery. The solution to all the limitations of waterfall and agile model was DevOps. It was introduced to overcome this problem. 
DevOps allowed ongoing delivery of software with less complex issues to address and solve problems quicker. DevOps basically acts like a bridge which builds the gap between the dev side and the ops side. By that I mean, it brings both agility to both development and operations. Most of the industries have started adapting this methodology because they have realized that development and operations go hand in hand to build a quality software. So DevOps is basically a methodology that is dedicated to the study of building, evolving and operating rapidly changing systems at a large scale. Let me make it simple for you, for any organization that wants to be lean and agile and can adapt quickly to evolving demands on the market, that is DevOps. DevOps is actually two words development and operations, a software development methodology that makes developers and operators work together. The combination of this common approach across development and operations has the capability to track, evaluate, and optimize which makes DevOps a cooperative approach to deliver a reliable software as soon as possible across businesses, development, and operational stakeholders. Let us focus on the image for a bit to understand more about DevOps, it is nothing but an infinite loop. Everything happens continuously in DevOps, it starts from coding, testing, deployment, monitoring everything is happening continuously here. Now, before moving on to the life cycle let's look into some benefits that DevOps provides. DevOps takes down the traditional departmental style in which a certain team is assigned to each mission, and it used to be siloed, in effect. This, in turn, has reduced versatility and reactivity. DevOps encouraged cooperation and collaboration beyond the lines of an organizational hierarchy. When companies implement DevOps with fault detection techniques, it contributes to dramatically reducing failures. DevOps is commonly implemented on top of the Agile model. It facilitates teamwork, modular programming, etc., making it easy to identify faults. Organizations would become more performance-based than power-based with DevOps. This makes the workforce more innovative and productive and decreases attrition, and increases retention. In DevOps, teams develop a culture of confidence and teamwork that supports them by constantly working on creativity and innovation to enhance organizational products and services. Such initiatives allow businesses to understand better and address their consumer needs. DevOps enables a single team to handle an application's entire life cycle, that is development, integration, testing, deployment, and monitoring. Now let's see each of the phase in detail. Continuous development is where you decide the plan and developers begin to write the application source code. There are no DevOps tools for planning, but many tools are available to manage the code. The code is written in any language but maintained mostly with version control tools, and this process is known as source code management. Git is a version control tool for distributed nonlinear workflows that provides data protection for quality software development. Let us now understand this using the image. This is the distributed version control system which does not rely on central server to store all the versions of the project file. Here, every developer has a clone or a local copy of the main repository as shown, that is every developer maintains which contains all the files in them and metadata present in main repository that is, Git. As you can see every developer can commit and update the local repository without any conflict. They can update the local repository with new data coming from central Git repository using push, pull commands. In this step, if our code makes a new commit, build is generated and it is continuously integrated with the current code. The new code has to be merged with the latest one continuously, as the ongoing development continues, and the changed code should ensure that there are no bugs in the current environment for it to function smoothly. The image illustrates continuous integration, which integrates different DevOps stages such as continuous development, continuous testing, continuous delivery, and continuous deployment. Let me tell you in detail how this process works. Continuous integration is a programming process where developers need to commit changes to the source code multiple times a day or more often in a shared repository. Each commit is then generated in the repository. This makes it easier for teams to detect problems early. Let us consider a scenario to know how Jenkins works. Developer commits code to the repository source code. In the meantime, the Jenkins server periodically scans for changes on the repository. The Jenkins server detects changes that occur in the repository of source code, where it will pull the changes and plan a new build. Before moving on to testing, let me just tell you different types of testing. Black box testing, a test technique that ignores the system's internal mechanism and focuses on the output produced against any system input and execution. It is called functional testing as well. Basically, it is used to test the program. There are a few important testing methods that you need to know under black box testing are. Acceptance testing, this guarantees that the specified functionality required in the device specifications works. 
it is done to ensure that the product delivered meets the specifications and performs as planned by the client. Beta testing, this is achieved by end users, an outside development team, or by publicly launching the full pre-version of the beta version of the software. The object of beta testing is to deal with unexpected errors. System testing, it ensures that it still functions by placing the program in multiple environments, for example, operating systems. White box testing, technique of research that takes into account a system's internal mechanism. It is also called testing of structures and testing of glass boxes. Basically, it is used to validate the program. White box testing is further classified into Integration testing, test type in which to generate the output, a group of components are combined. Often, if software and hardware components have some relationship, the interaction between software and hardware is checked. Unit testing, it is an individual unit or group of similar units being evaluated. The developer often does it to verify that the unit he or she has introduced produces the expected output against the input given. After the build is successful, it deploys the build into the test server, Jenkins provides feedback and informs developers of building and testing outcomes. The source code repository will continue to search for improvements made to the source code, and the whole process will continue to repeat. Once this process is over, the application is ready for deployment on the production side. After continuous integration, the software developed is continuously tested for bugs. Several automation tools are used to test our codes developed continuously to detect any bugs. Dockers can be used in this phase as containers for simulating the test environment. This process deploys the code on the production servers. It is also crucial to ensure that the code is properly deployed on all servers. Let us try to grasp a few things about containerization and configuration management before we continue. Configuration management is the operation to release server installations, schedule server upgrades, and keep all servers compatible with configurations. Containerization tools ensure consistent application development, testing, and deployment across environments. Nagios is a tool used for continuous monitoring of systems, applications, and services in dev. Ops. Failure will alert the technical people, which allows them to rectify it before it affects the business processes. So, let's see the working of this tool with the help of the above diagram. Nagios usually runs as a service and has plugins that reside on the same server. They contact servers on your network, which either be remote or on the internet. You can view the status information using the web interface of Nagios or receive an SMS notification to your mobile phone. Now, this service behaves like a scheduler, as shown in the diagram, which runs the scripts and stores the same results and will run other scripts if these results change. Plugins are nothing but scripts that can be executed by a command line to check the service's status. Thus, it determines the current status of your services on your network. Although, Continuous delivery and continuous deployment sound similar, both are different altogether. So, let's dive in and find out how they differ from each other and their functionalities. Before looking into those let look into the common process which happens that is continuous integration. Continuous integration, as the name implies, refers to running integration tests anytime improvements are made to the codebase. The C framework will rebuild your branch whenever developer commit and push changes to your repository, and also run all relevant test cases to check your new changes will not break your existing application. Now, let's focus on continuous delivery which is a software development process where you build an application such a way that it can be released to the production at any time. Hence, you achieve continuous delivery by continuously integrating application built by the developers, running all the automated tests on the executable files, after the testing is done you push the updated files to production environment to ensure that application works in production. To summarize, continuous delivery includes stages like building the application, running automated tests on executable files and pushing them into the production environment rather than deploying them to the prod servers. By that I mean, the application will be ready to be deployed all the time. So, whenever you want to deploy the code you have to manually approve the code to deploy it to the prod servers. Let's see how continuous deployment is different from continuous delivery. It simply means that change goes through the pipeline. If it passes all the tests then the application is deployed to the production server automatically without manually approving the code. With this approach, quality of the application depends on the quality of the test cases because everything is automated here. Let's see what is infrastructure as a code and why it is important in this DevOps process. IAC helps you to program your infrastructure just like you program your software. With the help of IAC infrastructure takes the form of a code file, since it's just a text file it is easy to copy, edit. Remember to put it under source code file like rest of the files. 
Say for example, if I have to configure 50 infrastructure at the client's end I cannot do it individually right. So, here IAC comes into picture, I program my infrastructure in one master laptop that is, developer's laptop and store an infrastructure as a code format. Now, it is easy to implement this right. So guys, let's understand this better with the diagram, as I told you developer configures the infrastructure in the form of a code file, which is stored in the Git repository which is a version control tool as we discussed earlier. Then, it is sent for testing to check for bugs. If there are no bugs, it is pushed onto the servers from where it is either deployed into cloud infrastructure or in-premise infrastructure. On the other hand, if we want to get some information from the infrastructures we use pull command as shown in the diagram. IAC works based on two main approaches. Imperative approach that describes a set of commands or instructions so that the infrastructure can achieve the final outcome. Declarative approach explicitly defines the sequence of steps the infrastructure needs in order to reach the final result which helps you to see how your final result looks like. Chef, Ansible, Puppet are some of the famous tools used. Now let's see how Tech Giants uses DevOps. Focusing on the image, any new features that these guys find out are deployed to a small user base. If you see from the image only one pipeline is active and rest is disabled. Now what they do is that they continuously monitor the specific user base on which the feature have been deployed to identify the bugs and get the user feedback. The bugs are fixed and feedback is implemented by continuous development and continuous testing. After the implementation the updated features are deployed back to same user base. This happens continuously until the features are stable and users are happy with the feature. So once the stability is achieved then these features are deployed to multiple user bases by making other pipelines active as shown. In case, if the users did not like the new feature then these companies can perform a rollback option and remove it altogether. This enables them to have a control and a stable mechanism for developing new feature to its massive user base. So, with this, we have reached the end of the session. Now is a prudent time for those wishing to make a career in DevOps field, and Invensys Learning can help you get started. Invensys Learning is a registered education partner of DevOps Institute to provide DevOps Foundation training globally. Enroll now with Invensys Learning to learn from the best in the industry and become a certified DevOps professional.